Let's look at a fragmentation mechanism. Let's start with a nice simple molecule, isopropanol. And of course, if we ionize this structure in the mass spectrometer, we lose an electron. We're going to pull that electron from a non-bonding pair of electrons, so on oxygen. And we get a positive charge, and this is the structure will have an mz value of 60. Um, 60 because its molecular weight is 60 and it has a charge of plus 1. So mass divided by charge equals 60. And this is our parent ion. Now, when this fragments, we're going to go through something called an alpha cleavage. We call it an alpha cleavage because where the radical is, is on the oxygen. Next door to the oxygen, we refer to that as the alpha position. So the alpha position is next to the radical. And as it turns out, for an alpha cleavage, we are going to break one of the bonds to the, to the alpha uh, center. In this case, it's this carbon. So here goes a mechanism. We're going to use fish hook arrows because we're moving our electrons one at a time because we're dealing with a radical. And the classic mechanism is we use the radical to make a new pi bond and of course to make a pi bond we need two electrons so one electron comes from the radical another electron comes from a sigma bond attached to the alpha atom and that's going to break that sigma bond so the other electron we put on the next door atom and what we get is something that looks like this now has a positive charge and um, plus we get a CH3 radical. So this, this methyl group has a mass of 15. This is a fragment radical that has come off of here and th this remaining cation is a fragment cation and it has it's going to have a mass of M minus 15 parent ion less 15, so it has a mass to charge value of 45. Notice the fragment radical doesn't have a mass to charge value because it doesn't have a charge, it's neutral. So this is not observed in the spectrometer, but what we see is a peak at 45. This is the classic alpha cleavage pathway. Now, there is another way that we can draw, have, have a fragmentation occur. And it's a little less common, but it does happen, and sometimes we see it. What instead is going to happen in the other pathway is this oxygen will facilitate the breaking again to the alpha position, but instead of breaking this, uh, the sigma bond, uh, by moving the electrons to opposite sides, called a homolytic cleavage, we do what we typically see. We break bonds and move both electrons to the same place. So if we break it, as shown, whoops, let's uh, undo that. If we break this as shown, what we'll get is a cation. This carbon picks up an, two electrons. It becomes an anion plus this piece. So now the cation is actually over here. This is our fragment cation and it's going to have an m to z of 15. This is now technically a fragment radical. It's a horrific looking radical, but it's a radical. And since it doesn't have a charge, we won't observe it. So there are two ways that we can do a fragmentation and, and they kind of they both resemble this alpha cleavage. We break a bond to the alpha atom. One is we move the electrons in a in a electrons go in opposite directions and that's in, in the top mechanism and the others in the bottom one. But the point is we went from an even mass parent ion and either way we drew the fragmentation we either got an odd fragment cation or the other odd fragment cation. So both are possibilities and when you take a sample of, of parent ions and you put them through a mass spectrometer some of them may go by the top way and others may go through the bottom pathway. So you might see both outcomes. So you need to be prepared to see all these different possibilities. But this is the basic mechanism for the alpha cleavage.